time for Ask the Mayor here on this Thursday with uh, Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. And uh, I was thinking the other day, October 1st, is that kind of a cutoff date like on yard waste, things like that, or was that November 1st? I believe it is November 1st. November 1st, yeah, okay. Yeah, but you're right. There will be a cutoff on, on, on trash and, and... Yeah, and, I was... I don't know why that hit it, me all of a sudden, but usually it's this time of year. Or it is. I'm pretty sure it's November yeah, okay. 1st. Yep. All right. Yep. What a way to start out a program with talking about something I know nothing about. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You know, there are days I don't either, so... Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, we have a lot to talk about today, and uh, one of the major things from this past uh, Monday is the uh, one and six year street plan that was approved by the Beatrice uh, City Council. Uh, usually, you know, you look at these plans in the first year or two are fairly well set, and then everything beyond that is kind of an estimation as to what yeah, you do. You know, I think, yes, years one and two are pretty well set in stone. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be pretty well set in stone because planning is a big part of it. And, mm-hmm. you know, James and Jason do a, a great job because it takes a long time to figure out, you know, and I think uh, they talked about their process, and their process is, you know, there's a uh, what I call probably an algorithm of, of how long the road has been untouched. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, there's also kind of what type of road it is. And then at the end of the day, though, they actually drive and they check because, you know, there can be something that an algorithm that looks like it's a bad road, but it's really still in pretty good shape. And we know there's some roads that, for whatever reason, uh, deteriorate fast. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they did a great job of planning one years one and two and then taking a look at planning items for three through six. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, one and two are set and, uh, you know, it does have a little bigger price tag because we do need to handle the road at uh, 33rd and Lincoln where the new elementary is going in. Um, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that something, A, is safe for uh, all the children getting to and from school, and B, trying to figure out a way to get, I think, what is it? In the mornings, there's like 300 cars that run in there from in a half an hour's time, and then you've got another 300 to 318 cars that kind of circulate and get out of there mm-hmm. at the end of, of the release of school. And so, you know, that's why we have traffic managers and why the design of that road at 33rd and Lincoln is what it is to try to get through mm-hmm. Uh, that much traffic, mm-hmm. and uh, that's probably one of the highest traffic spots we'll have <laughs> yeah. in the community. Um, so one and two, I think, are pretty well said and pretty well thought out. Mm-hmm. I think the thing to remember with years three, four, five, and six, there are estimates that also include possible wish list items. Mm-hmm. You know, we did the study on Lincoln Street. And so at some point in time, we do need to start addressing those issues at Lincoln Street. And then, you know, I think they went ahead and included some items for the possibility of the downtown bypass. Um, All of those on three through six will be dependent on what money there's there, uh, what possible grants we would have to do street work, uh, safe street plan. I know that we'll apply for grants there. So... Those are going to be a little more fluid of moving projects in and out based on what we have for dollars. Early on with the Lincoln Corridor project, I know there was the thought, do you do it all at once or in phases? It kind of seems like you've almost accepted that it's going to be a phased project, do you think? Yes. I don't think there's any way to, to you know, to, to bite that big a chunk off. Mm-hmm. I think you have to do it in phases, and I think... Uh, if you look at the plan, what it does is it takes a look at areas that probably cause the most issues with traffic. I mean, the first place we'll start is, what is it, 4th or 5th through 7th, where you've got that intersection at 6th and Court, where, you know, you do have kind of an odd intersection there mm-hmm. um, that causes some confusion of what cars going straight and what cars are turning. So that's probably a great place to start. And mm-hmm. then we'll move down and take a look at some other issues right around 13th Street that would need some issue, need some work because of its of the curvatures and those type of things. So I think to try to do it all at one time, you know, I think the number was quite close to $12 million. Yeah. And again, we just need to be prudent with the dollars that we have for our streets because those aren't the only streets in the community we have to take care of. You know, I, I was trying to remember back of all the times... Of course, you talk about this every year, the one- and six-year street right. plan. Uh, any other time when you saw on the horizon so many big-ticket cost 
projects at once. And the thought comes up, and I imagine you thought about this too, how do we do all this? I mean, because it is a money thing. It but is. But if you, I guess if you can spread it out over certain years, it becomes more palatable depending on what your sources are for revenue. Or- right, right. And, you know, most of our revenue comes from the state mm-hmm. when we take care of you know, one of the things One of the things that, that is probably a misconception with the streets um, is your property tax doesn't go for street repairs. Uh, I think there's a, uh, what is there, a, there's a small portion of your sales tax that goes mm-hmm. to the streets. So there's gasoline tax. There's a gasoline the- tax, and then there's also what we get from the state to maintain 77 and 136. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, we have to be very prudent with the dollars and try to balance that out. Yeah. However, one of the things that we did do last at this last council meeting is we did decide to hire a fundraising group that knows how to be write grants and what grants we could possibly get. And they're going to be working with us for the next three months. They'll come out here. They'll meet with the department heads. They'll meet with uh, city administrator Tobias Templemeyer. And, you know, having this one in six plan in place is really a, a good opportunity for them to start looking about you know, what grants are coming up? How do we work with those grants? Are there some appropriations we can get from our senators or congressmen? And so we need to, you know, they, they'll make some contacts and meet with them as well. Mm-hmm. There are just so many things that they can do that we can't do. Yeah. And when it comes to grants, state grants, we write internally. And they're um, a little easier and a little more straightforward. Federal grants have so many little nuances that if you miss one little nuance, it gets thrown out. Mm -hmm. And so trying to apply for a federal grant, it's like, like, you know, having to swim with the big fish. Mm -hmm. And this firm is hopefully going to help us swim with the big fish that when you look at those street projects, um, hopefully there's some grant money that can come to Beatrice. But they're not only going to look at that, they're also going to look at, uh, you know, the WPC has a number of projects they have to continue to do to upgrade the, the water plant. Um, so I think it's, a, uh, you know, when you, when you, at the end of the day, I think it was a very smart move for us to have this company come in and say, okay, here are the possibility of grants that we can go after. And there's a lot of cities and counties out there that think they have a better project than you do, so you face a lot of competition. Yes, you do. Regard, so you really do. For a limited pool, at least somewhat limited yeah. pool of yeah. funds. You know, it, it, it sounds like it's major dollars. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, there are some other uh, cities that are going to be applying for those funds as well. Yeah. On the topic of you know outside help regarding grants and donations, you also have an arrangement with a company recently that has helped you get donations to benefit Hannibal Park and upgrades there and continued kind of making that sort of a recreational, I guess, hub for lack of a better word for, I mean, things that are going on. One of the things uh, right after you did that, uh, I know social media kind of blew up with criticism about Oh, you had to give up 30% of what's raised to this company to do that, as if anybody assumes consultants do work for free, which they don't. But uh, you got money now you didn't have uh, just days ago because of help from an outside firm. You know, that's right. Um, For Hannibal Park, there is a master plan Mm -hmm. of trying to get Hannibal Park completely finished off, Mm -hmm. you know, because it does have a, a great softball complex and, uh, the tennis courts, and there's a lot of upkeep there, and, and we want to make sure we finally finish that project. Uh, when the firm came to us, we looked at their contract, and, you know, yes, we do give up 30%, but on the other side of the coin, they know how to go out and visit with these these folks. And by the way, I want to thank the people that did step up to the plate, for mm-hmm. instance, like Pinnacle. Mm-hmm. But they know how to put packages together that make it work for the donor and make it work for the city. Mm -hmm. And those are just some skills that we don't have in-house. And the money we're we're receiving from those wonderful naming rights, we wouldn't have had. And so that's just one more way that we can stretch our public properties department to get things done without putting... Well, what do we got? We've got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars have come in, mm-hmm. so that you net out about two hundred. That's two hundred thousand dollars that 
will we don't have to come up with from property tax yeah. that will help us move forward to finish off Hannibal Park. You know, we talked about it before, but you know, naming rights even just maybe ten years ago was kind of a uh, atmosphere for professional sports and bigger entities and things like that. You see it all the time, and less so on local government. But did you see that? As more and more governments like you do have success with this, do you see that to be a growing trend? No, I, I definitely see it to be a, yeah. a growing trend. I think it's, it's uh, you know, I think one of the, the, the neat things is it, it's, it's, you know, a lot of the private sector helping the public sector. Mm-hmm. And I think there's benefits to both. And so I do see it growing. I, you know, I can't really think of maybe any other place that this is really going to fit in the city of Beatrice right now. But... On the other side of the coin, it, it's, a, it's a reality. I mean, you are seeing, you know, basketball courts named after corporate sponsors, mm-hmm. uh, even at the high school level. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just it is one of those things that really helps stretch our dollars mm-hmm. and helps make us work. And, and, again, for those folks that stepped up to the plate for naming rights, we're very, very grateful to have those people support us in our community. Pinnacle Bank and runs a restaurant, the first two to step that, on. Absolutely. Board, so. so, you know, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. All right. Back with more on uh, Ask the Mayor with Mayor Bob Morgan in just a moment. You're listening to Ask the Mayor on KWBE with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan. Had a couple of actions, I think, on or on the agenda Monday night regarding the Kensington. What's the, uh, <laughs> what's the update there? <laughs> well, you know, that has been... Um, I guess what you would say, the highs and lows of, of <laughs> trying to get things done for the community. Um, there was a ARPA funds grant for a million dollars, and the state said we could use it for whatever we wanted. And so we worked with Main Street, and you know, putting having a million dollar ac- or yeah, a million dollar access for that building sure helps investors decide if they want to buy the property. So it's not on, it's not. Main Street is not us that own the building, and they can rehab that building. Well, after the grant was awarded, they came back and said, oh, well, wait a minute. If you sell it to somebody else, you have to pay back the million dollars. If you rehab the building, you have to pay back the million dollars. And so you have to do that within two years. It was almost like, um, no, this isn't a grant. This is a loan. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, you know, at at, at at that point in time, it made no sense yeah. whatsoever to commit a million dollars to something the city would have to pay back. So we're, we're st- I mean, you know, the, the, the silver lining is we're still working for with a couple, two companies that, um, you know, there may be some other opportunities for money that will help them purchase the building and, and they can rehab it for the city of Beatrice. And they would own it. I mean, it's it would be an investment for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, I'm sure they're looking at their return on that investment. But I think they have reinstituted the historic tax credit, uh, so there's a pool of money there uh, for them to apply. You know, if you look at the size of that building, it, it, it certainly would qualify, I believe, for TIF. Uh, so there's, you know, with tax increment financing, there's probably some opportunities there. So we continue to work with uh, a, a developer or two to see how we can um, make that a great landmark that it is. Are you concerned at all about how long it sits unused due to, you know, lots of times buildings with no attention, I mean, maybe accelerates the uh, level of, you know, decay or deterioration, that type of thing? And yeah, certainly we worry about that. And, and uh, you know, I think right now we rent <clears throat> it from Main Street and we go in there and try to take care of what needs to be done. And, you know, just some of those plain and simple things like you check out, the, the air conditioning and the heating to make sure those are working. Mm-hmm. It probably sounds silly, but you need to probably flush the toilets and get some water running through the building. And so we will, you know, do some monthly walkthroughs to mm-hmm. maintain that building. I'll bet you in the first part of your mayoral term here, you didn't think you'd spend so much time talking about fireworks. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> you know, I thought to myself as I was driving here this morning, I go, I'll bet one topic that Doug is going to pick up will be fireworks. Um, so you came prepared, huh? <laughs> well, I don't know if I came prepared, but, you know, I think the, you know, you, first of all, um, you know, we have a committee um, mm-hmm. that deal with ordinances. And we met as a committee 
and I think Gary has done a great job with the ordinance committee, and actually I think that he and uh, the committee did a really good job at a compromise. Mm -hmm. um, we know, first of all, that somehow, some way, July 5th got added on there, and somehow, some way, we need to get July 5th off of there. Yeah. And, you know, whether it rains or it doesn't, there comes a point in time enough is enough. But we also know that we have a considerable number of other people that truly enjoy shooting off fireworks and watching the displays. Now, granted, there are you know, people who don't. And so it really showed, I think, Monday night, polar <laughs> opposites <laughs> um, and concerns came from a couple of councilmen that have some issues. Yeah. So, you know, I think what I, I know what we'll do is we'll refer it back to the committee. And, I mean, you have to understand there's other ordinances and other things we're looking at. So we'll refer that back to, you know, the committee um, somewhere probably the first part of 2024. We'll take a look at, at, at maybe running something else by. But right now we're going to probably take a look at some of the other things that that committee needs to do. Um, because it was resoundingly defeated. Mm -hmm. And it was resoundingly defeated for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, we had the, a couple of people that were for it, keeping it as it is. And then we had people who were wanting it to be shorter, which there are ways to work through that had we moved on. But we'll refer it back to the committee. Um, Gary will do a great job, and we'll bring some type of compromise mm -hmm. forward. Um, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, but like I said, right now we've got other things that we want the committee to take a look at. So um, it'll be a little while before we bring that back. I think the state allows a maximum of 10-day period on sales and use. That's the maximum. Yes. You have had for many, many years, July 1st through the 4th. In retrospect, do you think it might have been a good thing just to leave it alone and, <laughs> and move on to, to something else? <laughs> well, I, I think you got to look at all sides of it. I really think you do. I mean, you know, I think, I think the intentions for expanding it a little bit and helping out some of the stands that raise money for uh, civic civic projects i think that probably was the impetus um but i think it's you know i i think it's one of the things that we said when the council passed it a year ago i think we all said we're going to bring it back around in a year after the first time of trying it and take a look about look at it and do you know discuss the pros and the cons and so i think we kind of made a a promise to the community to take a look at the at how it went from all mm -hmm. sides, both pro and con. And so that's what we had. I think we needed to bring that back as a discussion point. I mean, the easiest thing would have been to just ignore it. Yeah. You know, but I think it was worthy of bringing it back to a discussion point. And, and really the compromise was, was really something that was worthy of bringing forward. Do you think a standardized nighttime curfew is a good idea? I mean, there was things about, you know, when is it on these days and then on the third and fourth, should it be later? Would it be worth just saying, hey, we're going to pick this time? That's when you can discharge through. And I, it's, you oh. know, I think that's something we'll look at. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's a compromise instead of midnight. Maybe it's just straight at 11 o'clock. Yeah. I don't you know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the things that yeah, I, I find myself as, you know, somebody who their entire life had a double, double, had real trouble time delegating. <laughs> um, so I think that, you know, we put these committees in place and I think we need to go to the process that's put in place that I put in place for committees. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a suggestion that they can certainly take a look at. All right. We'll finish up. Ask the mayor with mayor Bob Morgan in just a moment. We have a few minutes left today for Ask the Mayor with Mayor Bob Morgan. Uh, we usually ask you for maybe a little bit of an update on the downtown water main project. Every time I go down there, they're kind of working on a new area. They're sealing things up. or <laughs> You can see it kind of getting close right. to the end, but still a lot of activity going on. A lot of activity going on. However, we're uh, I think we're on target for having that finished up by the end of the month. And, and I think one of the concerns was the Night of the Great Pumpkin, but I think we're on track for that. I'm mm -hmm. not... You know, I, that since it's Main Street's project, I don't want to <laughs> say that we are or aren't. But I will say that uh, Myers has done a great job. Um, they're right there in the toughest part, as we've talked about before, all the taps that are going on. Mm -hmm. But they're really doing pretty good work. And, mm -hmm. and I think that at the end of the day, 
they have really tried to accommodate the city and downtown because they understand. They understand the disruptions that it causes as they put in the new water main. And and I think Michael even said that, uh, um, I think he said when he gave his last presentation, and by the way, congratulations, Michael. Yeah. Um, good luck on your new endeavor. I think he said that, you know, um, the downtown people felt like they were uh, weathering it pretty well. Yeah. You mentioned Michael uh, Sothen. He is a new, uh, he's with History in Nebraska now, and uh He's with the uh, Historic Tax Credit program that we referred to uh, earlier. Morgan Fox takes over in his place. They got a bit of a transition time here, but uh, I didn't realize uh, Michael had been here 10 years. I think he came from Kearney to yes. uh, Beatrice, yep. and I uh, want to wish him the best. He did a lot of good work for the area. You know, he did, and, and I think throughout working with Main Street and, and the older buildings and, and, you know, working what he worked with a number of, of uh, properties with uh, with what he's doing with historical tax credits mm-hmm. um, and working them through that process. I think he found a true love with the history of, of older buildings. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, good for him. He's moving into, you know, as we all think about dream jobs, if you have your dream job of something you love to do, mm-hmm. it's really not work. Yeah, yeah. So. And, you know, uh, the first. Every job carries its frustrations, and I would imagine one of the frustrations with a position like that is things don't happen overnight. It's kind of a it's a marathon, not a sprint, as they say on those things. You know, that's really, really true, and that's even from the city perspective. That's probably the hardest thing to understand, particularly people that you know I know have served on the city council and other positions. Um, it just, you know, Government takes longer to do things. Mm-hmm. And when you're used to having things done because you said, okay, we're going to do it, mm-hmm. um, it gets a little bit of frustration. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think Michael has that um, patience yeah. and just the attitude that that won't bother him. Yeah, He'll just plug away and get it done. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things maybe to touch on before we wrap up here. Uh, we were talking about the downtown water main uh, rep- replacement work. Uh, this week, you approved a bit of a company to do some work. I think it's on court between 10th and 13th. Sidewalks, curb work there? Yes, get si- side, sidewalks, cur- curb and gutter. <clears throat> we're getting prepared for uh, when the state comes in and resurfaces uh, 136 from the railroad tracks to about 21st Street. Mm-hmm. If you look at that area, um, after they got done uh, doing the water main projects and things, you can see where, you know, those areas really, really need attention. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's that area that may look a little funny to people. I think what you'll see is the curb and gutter or curb and sidewalk done, but you might see the intersections may have gravel where the sidewalk comes down into the street. Mm-hmm. Because they'll come back and they'll pour the ADA ramps as they do the work that goes down mm-hmm. Court Street, and I think that I think that is part of what is the responsibility of the state. So if we do it, they're going to tear it up and redo it anyway, and we try really, really hard not to do things twice. Yeah. Speaking of doing things, the uh, street department's been really busy with good weather this fall and late summer doing various repairs, patches, things around the community. Jason Moore's crews have been really busy. Seems like every day I'm driving to work or driving downtown, I see them at this location, and then the next right. day they're over here doing something, and it seems like I don't know if the weather's been any better for that, but they've gotten a lot done over the past well, two weeks. Well, it's been a wonderful um, start to the fall. Yeah. It certainly has. Mm-hmm. And... I think the other thing is, 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 you know, quite honestly, we're really fortunate because uh, Jason's guys are good. Mm-hmm. And trying to do all that work, bringing in contract labor to do it, uh, it would probably would have cost us two-thirds more than what's being done. And yeah. when you see a lot of the work being done, <coughs> you know, it, it does cause some heartache as, as you drive down Highway 77 and you know, all of a sudden you find out that the right lane's closed, you got to get in the left lane. But those are areas that are, those patches have really smoothed that road out, number mm-hmm. one. And number two, it does prep that road and make sure we get to that 2028 when they try to 
uh, resurface 77 through Beatrice. Yeah. When you drive on a section for a long time and you hit bumps all the time, then the work's been done on it and you forget all about it. Pretty soon you forget that it even needed attention, so that's probably the biggest testimonial to the street department. I'll get a Absolutely. job. Absolutely. They're doing a great job. Yep. Yeah. All right, Mayor, thanks very much for coming in again. All right. Thank you.